This is James Taylor, and you're listening to The Creative Life. The Creative Life podcast is a show created for you, the creative. If you're looking for inspiration, motivation, and advice while at home, at work, or on your daily commute, then this show is for you. Each episode brings you a successful creative, whether that's a musician, writer, artist, designer, performer, educator, or creative entrepreneur. They share their journey, their successes, their failures, their creative process, their insights, and much, much more. In this episode, I speak with the guitarist Ulf Vakenius, and we talk about his life on the road, working with the great Oscar Peterson, and how he made the transition from being a side player to being a solo artist. Enjoy this episode. Hey, it's James Taylor, and I'm excited to bring you our featured guest today, Ulf Vakenius. Ulf uh, is a longtime friend. He's a Swedish jazz guitarist and former member of both the Oscar Peterson Trio and the Ray Brown Trio. His fans include a who's who of other great guitarists, including Pat Metheny, John McLaughlin, John Schofield, Mike Stern. He is an act recording artist and has also performed with Herbie Hancock, Bill Evans, Michel Legrand. The list goes on and on and on. He's also performed in front of some uh, notable names, including President Barack Obama, former President Bill Clinton, Clint Eastwood, Dustin Hoffman. He is an incredible uh, musician and a very, very nice guy. And I'm really happy to have you on the show. Ulf, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. And thanks for the beautiful presentation. I'm moved. <laughs> <laughs> so so share, I was giving you a little bit of an intro, but you know, share with listeners what, what, what's going on in your world just now. What are you up to? Uh, the usual thing, which is, is a combination of uh, a lot of travel and... Uh, uh, also, I mean, I'm doing it. I'm very fortunate because I'm doing a lot of different projects all over the world, and also I'm very fortunate to to play with your father, mm. Martin Taylor. Yeah, yeah, you and do, you uh, we should together, yeah, yeah. So we're gonna play in a couple of days, and uh, so I'm I'm actually doing uh, the thing I always do, which is a combination of a lot of travel, and when I'm home, it's it's a lot of office work, you know, and and try to get things working, you know, and part time family. So it's 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 like you know juggling, you know. So it's <laughs> and, and you must be one of the busiest guitarists. In, in the world, I mean, every time I, I, I go on your, you see your face, Facebook posts, and you know, one day you're in Brazil, the next day you're in Russia, the next day you're in Korea somewhere. You, how, how many days a year are you probably on the road? I never dare to count, so I just, you know, <laughs> I just, uh, I'm trying to balance it, you know, but it's, it, it's, it's when you are a freelance, it's very hard, you know, the old saying about uh, the ketchup bottle, you know, and, and first, you know, nothing comes and then everything, you know, just comes and it's, it's, it's like, it's very hard to balance, you know, uh, exactly how much you travel, but I mean, I'm pretty much travel all the year with, with the, uh, short breaks all the time and I you know with the family and so tell me what does the first hour of your day look like then uh, when I'm home uh, I usually uh, uh, when when I'm waking up I, I I always have a strong coffee and and uh, and that uh, that's the moment that comes there what what I called fairy dust you know it's the, <laughs> you know, it's the inspiration moment you know where you might a compose a song or you might come up with a very smart idea because you're well rested you have your coffee a new day is starting and that's so so for me it's a very sacred moment the first two hours after the breakfast because it's for me the most create, creative uh, uh, period on the day, you know. Mm. And w- and when you're when you're on the road, obviously you're you're traveling. Maybe you're going between cities every day. Have you been able to as much as possible try and incorporate that into your into your on the road as well? You know, trying to find time in the morning when you know you've got it's your time. Right, right. I always try to keep a regime when I'm I'm traveling, you know, so I practice and I do, you know, the business. I keep busy, you know, all the time. So it's like it's it's uh, it's an ongoing process all the time, so to speak, you know. And what would you say is your biggest weakness as a music artist and as a, as a, as a either a, as a player or as a creative individual? I think... Uh, which I think you're going to ask me later also about this question. I mean, it's always, you know, this when you have to choose between to being uh, completely going solo, you know, mm. doing your own thing or 
the other choice of playing with great people. You know, this balance of just realize yourself 100% or or choosing to to work with other you know what I'm what I'm aiming at yeah I mean you because you you became first known to a lot of uh fans because of your work as you know as, as part of a band with either Oscar Peterson or with Ray Brown how did right. how did you get to a point making that transition into doing the solo thing, which I would imagine must have been pretty scary from having usually other people around you that then suddenly say, you know, I'm going to start doing the, the solo shows. Exactly. And I think, you know, it's, I can, I can say, I can incorporate you for the two, you know, in this, it's like when you get a call from Stefan Garpelli or Oscar Peterson, you don't turn it down, <laughs> you know? So it's, it's the greatest sideman gigs in the world. So I guess my career has really, you know, uh, come out of playing with the greatest people on the planet. And I couldn't, you know, if if I had to redo things, I don't know if I had, you know, ever could have said no, you know, because mm. it was it was the dream come true for me, you know. So so when you ask me weaknesses and strongness, maybe you know, sometimes you feel like ah, I should have just done my own thing from the beginning but it's you know it's it's uh, easy to say now so on the flip side what would you say is your your greatest strength my strength i think it's it's my um uh i wake up every day and i have i have this lust you know the lust is everything in music you know yeah uh, to 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 have the lust of create things to have this spirit when you wake up you know that you want to write the tune or you want to do something for your fellow musicians, you know, or, you know, just create something going. And I think my, my lust for music is my biggest advantage. I mean, it's, it's such a great point. And I, I've seen this so many times um, with art. I've seen artists who haven't yet become successful, but who then go on to become successful. And I, I recognize this as a trait in them. And I've also seen artists I've worked with who are maybe older but who still are doing great work and, and creating and, and yeah. doing great stuff. And they all have, you call it lust. I would call it maybe hunger or there's some, this, yeah. there's a, there's a drive there within them, exactly. which is, is way beyond, you know, they've probably had, they've had the awards and they've had the Grammys and they've had the exactly. fi- financial side of things as well, but there's something that makes them want to get up every day and create. Exactly. And, and, and I mean, as, as my son, Eric is saying also, he's saying like, uh, uh, what are your goals? What are your dreams? Mm. And he's saying, I'm living my dream. Every day I walk up and pick up my guitar, I'm living my dream. Mm. That's great. No, I mean, it's, it's, we're, we're, we're so fortunate if this is our, this is our career, this is our calling to be able to do this. <laughs> this is our, exactly. you know, sometimes we have to kind of uh, pinch ourselves that we're, that we're, we're fortunate exactly. to have this. And so what's one habit that you, you wish you maybe had? I mean, um, it, maybe I wish I, I was a little more, you know, uh, uh, structured sometimes, you know. You, I always want to be better, you know. But, I mean, I, I've grown to, to, you know, accept myself, you know, yeah. for the better or for the worse, you know. So, it's, but I mean, I could be, you know, I look at my wife, you know, she's so structured, you know, <laughs> so I get envy, you know. But, you know, at the same time, I have accepted myself, you know, so... So what's something that you're, you're working on just now or something you've, you've, you've been involved in that is really exciting you the most? Uh, I, I have to say, you know, it's nothing for the moment that it's, I mean, I have ongoing things all the time, you know, and for me, it's such a beautiful thing to, to also, uh, when you work with different people, you, you, you step into their culture. So for instance, uh, in two days, I'm going to meet your father and I step into your culture, and we have a great time, you know. And and uh, then I go to South Korea. I step into their culture, you know. So so it's uh, it's it's the answer of the question is I have uh, like maybe ten different projects, you know. And I play also with my son, which which is a fantastic thing, you know. So. And Many things. I think the last time we met was in Vancouver. You were playing the Vancouver Jazz Festival with with um, the, the, that wonderful uh, Korean uh, right. artist and singer. Uh, so yes. that, and her name again is Sun... Uh, Yoon Sunna. Yoon Sunna. And yes. she, uh, what, what, was, what I found really fascinating on that, it was 
it, 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 it made me thought, think of if Bjork could sing jazz, yes. this is what it would sound like because it's, it's it, what she was doing uh, musically was very, yeah. very interesting. Much, you know, yes. she was not, this is not a, an evening of jazz standards but, no, by, no, 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 by any means. And, and you're, the, 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 there's something so spe- special, you know, between voice and guitar that that's, you know, it is. Joe Pass and Ella Fitzgerald to oh, for, of many years. And, and you're, you're, you guys are taking it somewhere else. You're doing something very interesting with it. Yeah. And I think it's, it's, it's not necessarily jazz, you know, it's, mm. uh, She's she's uh, we she's a hybrid of many things and and uh, but what I always looking for you know in this if you have a, a, a artist who can I mean in this case a female singer if she can do a palette of great sounds or you know interesting things that's one thing but what I'm basically looking for can she, could she sing a song you know mm. straight ahead you know and and. She has this ability too. She can sing a straight song and make people cry, and that's a great gift. Exactly. And so, talk to me about a time when you've you've worked at something. You've had you've had a goal, as we were discussing earlier, and you've really worked at it. But for whatever reason, it hasn't worked out. And then, more importantly, what was the lesson that you you learned from that experience? I I learned, you know, one thing. I have to. I have I have observed a thing you said too, and it's it's. I think uh, I've been working on things and sometimes you think you can do it alone. But uh, I came to the conclusion that you have to come up with the idea and then you have to share it with other people to make it happen. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's such this this industry we, we work in. Um it's funny because you're obviously the, the media will will often portray the person that's on the stage that's there but they you, they never show the hundred people behind the stage or the people that's exactly. made that made it possible it's such a collaborative team experience which is it's not really talked so much i wouldn't say it's not talked so much about music college and it's definitely not no. talked about in the media as well exactly so probably for you know for you to be on that stage at that let's say we were talking about Vancouver Jazz Festival that concert there was I would imagine there's there's probably uh, there's maybe twenty people at the venue involved from the production side there's uh, yes. there's a whole marketing team there behind it there's, there's there's your team that's that's involved in things it's a very collaborative experience music exactly and I can tell you an interesting thing for instance in Korea you know they do everything collectively you know it's always a big team of people you know mm. and and uh, the the country was almost going bankrupt at the one point you know in the 50s or 60s and the whole population was comp- tribute with money on uh, out of their own pocket to save the country so they started a bank which was the people's bank Vori bank so the whole culture is, it's always behind, like for Yun Sona, it's a staff of 20 people behind her, you know. Yeah, but people don't see that. It's, <laughs> they, they, can't, <laughs> they can't see all the, all, the, all the things that are going on. So, no. so you, you've spoken about, you know, that, that time, the, the importance for you of, of having that, that, team, that team around you. Was there, a, was there a point in your life where that, that realization crystallized where you said oh okay I, I i can't do this alone i need to have other people around me yeah i, th- I think it has also very i think it, uh, we live in very interesting times because you can either see it uh, uh, pessimistic like you know the industry is going down or you can see possibilities you have internet you could do it yourself and as i look at music before it was always a kingmaker you know who mm. sat there and decided if you're going to be a star or not today if you have good ideas and you have a team around you, and my team is my two sons, you know, so and I, they learning, you know, a, a different skills to help me, you know. So uh, uh, that for me, I'm, I'm always having this discussion with my son, Eric, that, uh, I mean, 20 years ago or 30 years ago, certain things worked very beautiful, but certain things didn't work beautiful. So today... You, I mean, the market looked different. I mean, the CD sales are, are almost, you know, gone. But new opportunities are there for everybody who look carefully, you know, and have a creative mind. And you're, you're often touring a lot of these new markets. Have, 
only recently opened up well they've started to kind of blossom anyway i mean we're speaking about asia yeah. there. i know you spend a lot of time in the far east but you also do stuff in in south america and eastern eastern europe right. as well so those right. mar- those markets before were, were maybe more difficult to get in unless you had a big operation exactly. behind you now someone like yourself you can you can kind of go into those markets the, the internet gives us the ability to have that that network exactly. as well which exactly. we didn't have before there's no the kingmakers anymore no, and also you you have you have this uh, uh, you have a, a presumption that some markets are closed and some are open, and but be, uh, the uh, time have changed. Mm-hmm. So, for instance, nowadays it's possible to tour in Brazil. It, it wasn't twenty years ago, you know, and Brazil is more prosperous now, you know. Yeah. For instance, and it's fascinating. Some of these ter- territories you're going into, um, they're. The, the 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 it's the thing I I love about a lot of the Asian touring is uh, unlike maybe let's say within jazz often a lot of the, yeah. the European jazz festivals tends to be an older demographic that tends to go you go to uh, you go to a show in China as an example um, right and you're playing to three thousand mostly folks in their twenties or thirties yes. and they're going yeah. insane they're going insane yeah, for the music exactly. it's like this is like the this is this is it's very new for, for us it's obviously it's been been around for for uh, you know a long time as well so exactly so to tell us about a time in your life when you've had you know that kind of aha moment or, or a light bulb moment in your in your life in your journey to to making it in music I don't think uh, I had a, a significant uh, light bubble uh, bulb uh, moment, but I mean, I think it's been like realizations uh, on the way, on the journey, you know, small things all the time, you know, and you correct your, your way of uh, creating things and how you work with the music. So it wasn't like a big event, you know, something like, ah, that changed my life because I very early on, you know, when I was around, uh, let's say, 15 years old, I was pretty sure what I'm going to do. And I, I know it would be a, a tricky road, but I I, I never has. I, I mean, once I picked up the guitar for real, I, I never looked back, you know, it, mm. it's I just kept on, you know. And you've worked with so many great, great players. Has there been any advice that you have been given over the years by by some of these great artists that you've worked you've worked with that you you really you really found very important? I think one is, is thing is important that everybody. Uh, I'm in music. You, everybody got a fingerprint. Everybody is personal, but sometimes it takes a little longer to bring the personality in the light. You know, mm. but I think. All musicians are basically unique, but you have to work on it like a diamond, you know, polish it yeah. to get, get it through, you know. So, and and uh, sometimes you are so enchanted with other artists, you know, like your idols, so you suppress your own identity, you know. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting one, finding that balance, because, you know, as as musicians and as artists we 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 look to stand on the shoulders of giants and and learn from other people and you know there's bits where you want to imitate oh i, I love the way that they're doing that kind of phrase there or, right, so right, you look to right. learn those things but it's, but then it's also not becoming so you know so you just become a carbon copy or a, a tribute exactly. a tribute band version of, of the exactly. artists that you like uh, th- that's the balance you you have to stand on something you know mm. and and but at the same time you have to to move on so it's it's that delicate balance you know so someone said to me the other i was having a similar conversation with someone the other day and we were talking about this where right. we we're actually talking in, in relation to visual art um, right. and he's he was saying that you know the way that he thinks about it is that it's it's like children you know you have you have right. mother and the father parents they have a child the child is not a carbon copy of either parent no it's a mix you know, exactly. as, and so he spoke about that. You know, he said, "I, I know, I, I love Picasso, but I also love Chagall, and I love this other, you know, uh, Anthony Gormley or some, so like a, right. a, a modern artist as well." So I am, a, I have a little bits of those DNA. It's a, it's a lineage. Right. I see myself as part of a lineage. I have a little bits of those things, but I'm not a carbon copy of any of those things. Exactly, that's a good way to put it. Exactly. So, do you have uh, an online resource or, or a tool like a you know Pro Tools or something, you know, some tool that you 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 kind of use and you like to recommend to other people? I, I mean, I, I'm using uh, uh, a lot, as you have seen, uh, social media, and uh, because it's free and it's it's. Uh, 
I mean, when I learned that Hillary Clinton going to start, start her presidential campaign on Facebook, <laughs> it really told me that social media is the thing. Yeah. So, so for me, I mean, uh, I'm using, using all the social medias and I have, of course, a website, uh, alphakenius.net, uh, you know, and, but I mean, I think the name of the game today is social media. I mean, mm. it's really become big, you know? Yeah. And also when I speak to a lot of artists and they say, you know, I'm not sure, you know, how to use social media, which one to use. I, th I think a lot of the time you kind of have to use it first just as a consumer to see if you like working with that particular right. technology. And, you know, I know some artists who are they, 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 they don't really spend so much time on Facebook, but they, they love Instagram. Yeah, and yeah, they've managed yeah. to build a great following using Instagram or other people oh. that, that love the video side. So they've built up a huge following using YouTube, YouTube or, or whatever. Right. Thing. So you kind of have to find that, you know, just focus, even just focus on one initially that you, you think, oh, I'm kind of interested in it. And, and you gradually kind of learn how best to use it and how your, how your, your audience likes to use it as well. Exactly. And I, th I think that the best thing is to, to, to mix it. I mean, mm. and you can have it in percentage what you like most, you know, but uh, it's, it, I think you should use everything in, in some way, you know, it's good for you. Yeah. So if you could recommend only one record or a book to our listeners, what, what would it be? Uh, I, I mean, if you talk about uh, classic jazz, uh, Night Train, Oscar Peterson, mm -hmm. and I'm a, I'm a diehard fan of American Italian culture. So Mario Puzo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 So all the God, is that the Godfather? And yeah, all, all the books by him because I, I love that culture, you know, so it's, uh, yeah. But you, you have some, obviously in Sweden, you have some great writers uh, coming out, the, you know, the, all the, was it Nordic Noir? I think, it, you know, that whole, that yes, whole style Steve of writing. Yes, and we have many crime novels. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I, I always think, I think, it's, you know, Sweden must be getting, or there's a lot of Scandinavian countries, it must be getting a bad rap because it seems all the crimes happening there <laughs> if, you, if you just read, if you read the books or watched the movies. Exactly. Now they're pretty skilled uh, authors, but I mean it's it's uh, pretty peaceful here. So yes, it, you're, you're you're living in a pretty peaceful part of the world, I would imagine. Yeah, I would say. I would mm. say. So imagine if you woke up tomorrow morning and you had to start from scratch. Uh, you know, all you have is your, your guitar and the, the knowledge that you've acquired over the years in music. What, what yeah. Would you, what would you do? I I think I would do almost the same, but I would maybe emphasis a little more on writing tunes, mm -hmm. my own compositions, earlier on, you know. Mm. And I would uh, maybe work a little more on, on my, I mean, uh, my own expression, you know. Yes, yes, I, I would still, you know, uh, learn from the masters and, and do almost the same as I did, you know, mix, mix it up, you know, to, to find your uh, voice. I think it's, it's a healthy thing to mix up impressions, you know. Uh, I mean, I blend them, you know, and uh, so I would do almost the same, but a little, I think I would write a little more uh, original tunes. And, you know, so you, you mentioned your son, Eric, is now, he's on that path, you know, sim similar to you as, a, as, a, as exactly. an artist. So, you know, do, do you often have like father-son conversations about the industry and, you know, what, what maybe you would do and do, 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 does he ignore your advice uh, very often? Uh, no, no, I'm going to, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it this way. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, we, we have a, a very healthy relation and, and it's, it's actually, I mean, I respect his, he is, you know, he's 27 and he's, he's burning, you know, and he's, he's what I say is a, he's really a crusader, you know, in mm. that age, you're a crusader, you know, yeah. and, uh, and, but I mean, he listened to me, some advice, you know, and, and we give, I mean, I listen to him. Mm. He has some smart things to tell me too. So it's a give and take uh, game. And, and I think um, also it's, for me, it's wonderful to get the inspiration. I mean, that, that fire, you know, <laughs> I, I take a little of his fire, you know, to, to, you know, to get going. Yeah, you know? that, that, that fire of youth. But I suppose, I mean, you worked with Oscar Peterson, Peterson for so many years. Yeah. That must have been a very interesting experience as a young guitarist, kind of, kind of coming through the the ranks, having having someone like that as a, as, as, a, as a mentor and someone that you could, not just from a musical standpoint, you know, in terms of uh, getting ideas, but also from, you know, having those little kind of conversations yeah. with him. Ex exactly. And, and I mean, I mean, first of all, it was, 
as you know, a dream come true. I mean, it's it's if you if you refer it to rock and roll terms, it's like getting the gig with uh, Rolling Stones or mm. Queen or or you know U two or whatever. And uh, for me, it was uh, from you know uh, from a guy who worked uh, mostly in Europe, you know, and around Scandinavia. Suddenly, I was I was at Hollywood Bowl, you know, Carnegie Hall, you know. It was I was in the Jet Set. I was meeting Clint Eastwood, Dustin Hoffman. It, it was unreal, but it, at the same time, I really tried to learn from it and and keep my feet on the ground, you know. And uh, and he was a very loyal person, so we often had uh, long dinners in his home in in uh, Toronto, and he he g- gave us advice, you know, and and he told uh, old stories, you know, about Ella Fitzgerald, you know, or Tata. See, it was it was for me, it was um, it was a dream, you know. It was it was guitar player's dream, you know. Well, Ulf, thank you so much for coming on the show. And, and tell us, what's the best way that listeners can connect with you and, and find out you know, where you're playing and what, what you're up to? Yeah, they, they find my schedule on uh, ulfakenius.net. And also, I'm uh, well represented on the Facebook. I have three, three <laughs> sides, you know. And I'm also on Instagram. So, so they're very welcome there. And... Uh, uh, I'm very happy I'm going up uh, in two days and going to play with your father and we're going to have some a really great time in Norway. Great. Well, I'm sure it'll be a, be a lot of fun and thanks for coming on the show. Olf. Thanks a lot, James, for having me. Thank you. Thank you, man. Bye-bye. Hey, James Taylor here again. And if you're interested in living a more creative life, then I'd love to invite you to join me as I share some of the most successful strategies and techniques that high-performing creatives use. I put them all together in a free downloadable ebook that you can get by going to jamestaylor.me. That's jamestaylor.me to get your free downloadable ebook on creativity.